Hello everyone and welcome to This is Europe and here's Slovenia. Now let's take a look, shall we? A mountainous bridge between the Balkans and Central Europe, Slovenia has been inhabited for an exceptionally long time, as evidence uncovered in caves such as this has shown. Those early persons supped upon an array of hunted meats, including marmots, weasels and red deer. Eventually the people grew out of their cavernous dwellings and began living in pile houses, built on stilts to guard against flooding on the marshy terrain. Bronze Age Urnfield culture followed, and Iron Age Hallstatt culture came after that. Then, of course, the Romans, then the after Romans' upheaval, then, from the 6th century, Slavic tribes settled in the region that we know as Slovenia, the ancestors of the modern Slovenes. In the 700s they began to be Christianized, then the land fell to the German Franks, and German rule continued under the Holy Roman Empire, and then along came the Austrian Habsburgs, who came to rule that empire too. So the long feudal days brushed by, interrupted in the 1500s by Ottoman invasion, and a peasant revolt, and then another peasant revolt. Naturally the rebellions were stamped out ruthlessly, but reform Reforms introduced under Empress Maria Theresa and Joseph II thankfully brought about a bit of betterment for the commoners. A brief interlude of French rule introduced new ideas to Slovenes and fostered feelings of nationalism that grew bolder as the old order grew weaker and more Slovenes entered the middle class and gained more say in how things were run. After World War I, Slovenia hopped aboard the South Slav Union ship and joined its fellow Southern Slavs in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Here's a picture of Slovenia's capital at the new state's formation in 1918. You can't really see their faces from here, but wait a minute. Yep, they were pretty happy. Now, due to its proximity to Austria, Slovenia was the most modern and industrialized member of Yugoslavia, and it did well, and then World War II. The Italians, Germans, and Hungarians helped themselves to Slovenian land, and after much misery and death, the war ended, and Slovenia returned to Yugoslav rule, though it was now a socialist state, not a monarchy. Tito was the leader, born in Croatia to a Croat father and a Slovene mother. Anyway, Slovenia again proved the most economically successful of the Yugoslav members. In 1991, it declared its independence. A short war followed in which the Yugoslav army attempted to prevent its breakaway, but soon abandoned the conflict to focus on the bigger war in Croatia. So Slovenia won its independence and went on to join this and that and today boasts a very high level of human development and is, per capita, the richest Slavic country in the world. They're also really good at basketball. So that's it for Slovenia and that's all from me for now. Bye bye <laughs>